Okay, this particular tractor has a dry clutch and a dry clutch housing. Okay. This is the clutch housing from this seam here at the engine block all the way back to right here. Okay. From here back is basically the transmission and differential. Obviously all wet. All wet, starting at this point right here. Gotcha. All right. At this seam on this divider, this housing, there is a transmission pump that is a, it's just a gear pump that is driven off of the shaft coming off of the uh, clutch. So when you push in the clutch, does that shaft continue to turn or does it stop? The shaft will continue to turn when the clutch is pushed halfway down. If the shaft is, if the clutch is pushed all the way down, the shaft stops turning. So do you lose hydraulics when you have the shaft all the way down? From the standpoint of this pump, pumping hydraulics, yes. But I will explain to you why here in just a second. Okay. You don't totally lose hydraulics. Okay. As a general rule. Right. Long enough, yes, you will. Okay. So what happens when the system is operating normally, that shaft is turning. Clutch okay. is out, clutch is engaged, shaft is turning. It is drawing oil out of the transmit, excuse me, out of the differential area and transmission area back in here. There is a screen down in the bottom, and it's drawing that oil up into here. Okay. All right. From there, it pumps that oil down to this housing right here. Is which that where is where the filter is? Oil filter housing right yeah. there. Okay. All right. From the oil filter, it goes through the filter, and from the filter, it comes into one of these three lines, and I have to look at the lines to see which one is which. This is the inlet line to the front of the pump. Okay. This is the pump. Okay. From the pump, go through the pump, and it Bill's system pressure, which on this tractor is 2,250 pounds, max pressure, 2,000 is standby. And the pressure oil comes out and goes into this line right here. Okay, the one on bottom. On bottom. Yeah. Now, since this is a closed center system, if it doesn't need the oil, for all practical purposes, the flow of oil is stopped. Okay. Doesn't flow anywhere. So excess oil, you've got oil coming in here. That's an open center pump. So it's anytime it's turning, it's trying to pump oil. Pumping. Right. So that oil's got to go somewhere. So it goes from there, the outlet side of the pump, back in there, you can't yeah. see it. Excuse me, the inlet side of the pump this is coming into the inlet side pumps not using it the main pumps not using it so that oil comes out and goes into this tube here I this tube you. up into this reservoir okay okay oh i know what you're getting at now so if you push the clutch all the way in you're living off of that oil correct but if you run that tank dry if you're using it enough with the clutch all the way in and you run that tank dry, then you lose hydraulics. You lose hydraulics. But you just let out on a clutch and it'll come right back. Assuming everything's working properly. Right, right. Okay. So now when, as a troubleshooting thing, let's say you don't have hydraulics. Could you check to make sure you've got flow into this? In other words, if that pump fails or the pickup fails, you would not have any flow when you're on standby. Correct. To that tank. So Correct. that's something you could do is troubleshooting. Yes. Okay. Right. This. Special delivery from Mimi. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Super Weather Strip Adhesive. Okay. All right. If all the hydraulic demands are being met and you don't need the oil, comes up, fills this tank up, and then the extra comes over, comes down into this line, okay. and goes from there. Back to the transmission. Back to the transmission. Gotcha. 
Okay. Now, okay. high pressure oil coming out of the head of the pump. If you can see this. Yeah, I can see it right, right here. there, that little 90 degree fitting. Got it. 90 degree fitting. That's where your standby pressure is coming out. So that's under 2250 all the time. Well, it drops down, but it's max pressure is 2250. Uh, pump goes out of stroke at 2250. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but standby pressure is 2000. Okay. Okay. And that's this line right here. This line right here. Okay. It comes back here, and lo and behold, first place it goes is this little line right here. Mine's going to the power steering. That goes the power steering, so gotcha. that gives you priority for the power steering. Okay. You're going to have steering before you have anything else. Well, that makes sense. All right. goes from here on back, and I think it goes internally. Can't remember, but anyhow, it goes back to supply the three-point hitch. There's an internal passageway coming up here. Right. Comes into, there's a valve housing right in here. Or valves in there. For the three-point hitch. For the three-point hitch. Gotcha. Now, with uh, Larry's, you were always wondering about the hydraulics. Right. Said, yeah, they're okay. Why did I have power steering, but the loader doesn't work? Yeah. And you're going to get power steering before you get anything else. Right. If it's only able to put out a couple of gallons. It's all going to the power steering. All going to go to power steering. Yeah. And a couple of gallons is probably not going to run the steering very well. Right. You just do a sort of a... Right. Make it so you can steer it. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, let's see. Now, how does the steering system work? Is there a physical connection between that steering wheel and the steering linkage? Or on this it... tractor, there is. Okay. A lot of tractors, there isn't, but we'll come around here on the other side. This is the, uh, of course, steering wheel and steering housing. There are two very unique looking valve uh, bodies in this housing actually in the column itself in the column itself and what happens is when you turn the steering wheel one way or the other it actually moves the steering shaft up and down slightly when it does so it cracks the valve, the valve open okay and lets high pressure fluid go to the bottom side or top side, top side of the piston of a piston which is right in here in this in well, that housing. In this housing, right down here, there is a, a piston, and it is connected. If you went in here, it's connected to a crank arm that comes out down here, and you've got a steering rod. So there's the crank arm right there. And that goes up to a bell crank at the front that's under yeah, here. That bell crank, and then that's connected to these. So this one has a mechanical linkage from the steering wheel. Now you can see the steering wheel if you turn to the right. Notice how the steering wheel goes down. Ah, sure enough. Turn it again. If you turn to the right, steering wheel goes down. If you turn to the left, steering wheel goes up. So that that free play there is opening and closing those valves. That's is there correct. an adjustment for that? It's shim adjusted when you've got this whole thing apart and okay. it's very, very critical. Okay. Used to be you could not shim adjust them. Some people started to shim adjust them to try to uh, fine tune them so right. that you had more control. But when you buy those valve bodies, they're about that big around, and it looks like a cylinder, mm -hmm. and has the valve internal in it. Right. And it comes with a shim pack that is matched for that valve body. Gotcha. And if you screw up and mix your shims up. You're in trouble. Then you got to go through, and there's, there is. You can just by figuring it out on your own. You can, in trial and error, you can figure out whether you need to add or deduct shims. What are the symptoms? Like if you have the shims wrong, what happens? Uh, it it, over, could, it wants to self steer, or it could self steer. It might not have power steering at all. Gotcha. In other words, if you were to move this and it never cracked the valve, 
you, you're not getting any power steering. Then you're just manual steering because right. this only moves so far. Right. You can see how far it moves before you've got mechanical. Oh, right. Do that again so you can see the linkage moving there. Yeah. So you got about an eighth of a turn or a quarter turn on the steering wheel, and then you're you're steering the linkage. Yeah. Right now, the reason the steering is so erratic on this is the fact that the ball joints or the tie rod ends. You can see the tie. Yeah, rod there's ends. some there's some play in that for sure. There's some play here, which that's not too bad, but this is pretty bad. Do that again. That'll be our next little project there, fix yeah. those tie rod ends. What about this bell crank? Does the bushing wear out on that, or is it pretty? Oh, yeah, they all, everything that you see there can and does wear out. It looks like it's been greased pretty regularly, though. There's a lot of grease on it. Yep. Yeah. Good okay. stuff.